Sally Scott, what sparked your interest in making art in the first place? Well, it's something I've always done, right from school, probably even preschool, um, onwards. And I was better at it than anything else I did, so I carried on. Were there particular teachers? Was there something in, in school that, that encouraged you, in, in, especially, I suppose, in relation to painting and drawing? There was art, an art teacher who was very encouraging and experimental, and I found that fascinating. Was there support from, from your family from early on? Sadly, no, not really. My father um, didn't know much about the visual arts and didn't approve. Whereas my sister, who went to the Royal Academy of Music, that was fine, because my mother had also been at the Royal College of Music. Um, <clears throat> but I managed to go to the local art school when I was about... 17, 18, um, but against a lot, that was Croydon College of Art, but against a lot of opposition. Um, and then with encouragement from some really good tutors there, I got into the Royal Academy schools, and which is essentially a postgraduate course. But because I was scarcely postgraduate, they just said, well, you can come, but you need to do an extra year here. So I thought, that's fine. And actually it was an amazing place because there were no fees. So the fact that my father wouldn't support me didn't matter in terms of being able to go there. And each summer I went up and stayed with my uncle, who was a painter in Edinburgh, who ran a pub, Bill Garrod. And I used to manage to win a landscape scholarship most years, which gave me money to go through the summer. And I would take my money and go up to Scotland and work for him and paint. And so I think through him you met some of the, the Scottish painters and encountered their work, which became quite important for you. Absolutely. He, when I wasn't working for him in the pub, he um, took me into Edinburgh and we met Anne Redpath, whose paintings I really liked, and she was an inspirational old lady. Um, and Willie Wilson, who um, was currently then a um, stained glass artist, and Gillis and some of the other Scottish painters, but I've always liked the Scottish colourists. Teaching um, has been, I suppose, an essential part of, of, of what you've done over quite a long time. Um, how did you find yourself drawn into, into that world of, of teaching? I started, the first teaching I did was when I was still a student, and I taught in a, a private girls' school in Byfleet a day a week, which was <laughs> funny and also in a, a youth club in Op Vauxhall, which couldn't have been more different. And I did those just to have some pin money. But when I left the RA schools, I went straight into teaching full-time at Birmingham School of Art. I was there for two years, and then I went to, came back to London and got a job at Hornsey College of Art in visual research, which was basically drawing. But the training in drawing stems from the when I was at the RA schools because that's a very classical place mm. and we had to draw from the antique and our first term we had to draw in the life school every day you weren't allowed to paint until you'd done a, a terms drawing which was quite a lot though previously I think it had been a year but by the time I got there they'd cut it down a bit. You, I know you said that uh, the freedom of painting is a perfect contrast to the rigorous discipline required in, in glasswork. But underlying all of your work, you say, in whatever medium, is a love of and, and commitment to drawing. Is that something, is that a commitment to drawing something you try to instill in students? Yes, I think it's essential. It's the most immediate way of, com of communicating something. Quicker than people, oh, we can do it on the computer. You don't need a computer if you can draw. You can do it on the back of an envelope. You can show somebody an idea and explore it. It is so immediate. And I think it's really all the drawing I did from, from that time is what enabled me to earn my living doing the glass because really those are big drawings. Yeah. They're not concerned with colour and they are concerned with drawing. And then it's translated into a difficult medium mm -hmm. being glass. but. It's made that possible, really. What drew you to, to glass work, and when did you begin to work in glass? In 63, I think it was. I had, was doing etchings as well as painting, and I always liked the etching plate more than the print. So I started making the plates the thing that I exhibited, and they got bigger and bigger. Um, 
etched metal, zinc and aluminium and various things. And they became the things that I would exhibit. And I got a job doing The Life of Nelson from Adam Tussauds as a mural. There were six panels of Nelson life size, but he was not very big, so they weren't too huge. <laughs> he was only five foot two. Um, and we built an acid bath in the garden out of doors and plastic. And actually, it was crazy, health and safety. Mm. Um, but I was doing it that way, etching big sheets of aluminium. And a friend turned up and he said, why don't you do sandblasting? Which I'd never heard of. I didn't really know what it was. And he had a factory down in Farnham, that was David Gillespie, who actually I'd been at art school with in Croydon. And then he'd been at the Royal College with Tony, with my husband, so lots of connections. And I used to go down there with some bits of metal. And it's a very simple process. You can learn how to do it in five minutes, but then it's what you do with it mm. is what counts. Mm. And I got another commission for a mural for Shorts of Belfast for the Farnborough Air Show. And with that, I bought my own equipment because I couldn't keep going down to David's factory with huge sheets of metal. And also at the same time, we moved house from Teddington to Twickenham and we had more space. And so I bought a sandblaster and a compressor and set myself up and I was working on metal. But at the same time as moving there, my studio was the front room of the house and it had a bay window with glass panels looking out onto the road. So I spend a lot of time looking out and people looking in. And I thought, I wonder if you can sandblast glass. So I got some more bits of glass, the same size as the panels of the window, and sandblasted them solid up to above my eye level so I couldn't see through. And then did birds and flowers and patterns and things above. And people, literally people began to knock on the door and say, where did you get your windows done? And so I started to do jobs for people. And this was in the early to mid-70s. And then um, in 77, my husband died. And I suddenly had to support my young family. And I was teaching one day a week at Hornsey Art School. That was fine, but it didn't bring enough money in. Um, so I began doing jobs. I did front doors, loo windows, all sorts of things. And I just taught my, a lot of it was pattern work, very repetitive, not very exciting, but I taught myself the technique and soon realized that actually you need to push it because otherwise it's just sort of stencily. Um, and I did a lot and friends were, I'm sure it was a time when everyone was spending money on their houses. So I did front doors all over Richmond, Teddington, Twickenham, Barnes, there's loads of them but then found that I'd done some work for people who were interior designers. Mm. So then they came back and said, I've got this job coming up, like at the Gatwick Hilton, Amy Johnson, and they wanted some very big panels done based on her flights around the world. And so a good friend of mine, Doug, who was a technician at Hornsey, came over and built an extension on our garage, um, big enough to take the glass. And so then I did these panels and it kind of escalated but I didn't know anybody else in the glass world I didn't even really think there was a glass world actually. Tell me a little bit about your partnership with David Peace and the work that the two of you did together and what unfolded from that. Well we met <coughs> at this conference at the Royal College of Art on glass and architecture and on day one, I sat through the lectures, which was very good. And then lunchtime comes and you collect your lunch, sort of buffet thing. And then you've got to go and sit somewhere. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to sit at an empty table in case nobody comes. And I saw this table, quite big table with two men and plenty of space. So I went over and said, do you mind if I join you? And the first thing, the man who turned out to be David Peace said, as long as you talk to us, come and sit down. So we did. And then... After a little while, he said, show me your music, which is his term for my book of photographs, which, of course, I had got with me. Um, and so from then on, we began to discuss um, jobs that I'd done. And he told me who he was, although he thought I already knew, which I didn't. Um, and after three days, he offered me a job to work with him on the first piece of church glass I'd actually done, which is up in Whitehaven. 
I just recently, actually, before that, I'd done the work for the French Lieutenant's Woman, and apart from the drawings of Merrill, I also worked for the art department, and I did some glass, and I did a huge angel, which was a pub, and <laughs> the angel pub, in, and it was supposed to, it was shot in Southwark at night underneath the bridges. It was all very atmospheric, and it was on perspex, because in film they don't use glass. And I remember thinking, all that work, and it's just going to get dumped and it would be lovely to do an angel in the proper place in a church and I, I just thought that but of course didn't realize that that actually was about to happen mm. and was was David Peace very well known there? he was well known in in his that sort of world as a glass engraver and his specialization was heraldry and calligraphy and he wanted a partner that could draw so we have actually I have a letter from Lawrence Whistler, who was the sort of top of the glass engravers, and he wrote an introduction to a booklet that David and I produced about a partnership of two working artists coming together, um, which was wonderful, because he talked about David, who was much better known than I was, and then he just talked about me and he said, Sally gives it wings, which was nice in all sorts of ways. Um. So from from that initial meeting then came many years. It did about of fifteen work. or so years. Um, David was a lot older than me, and he died in two thousand three. I think he was eighty seven. Um, and he used to say to me, "I always thought I should have a, a younger partner so that when I pass off, they can finish off the work," <laughs> which is what happened. <laughs> um, I did finish off any joint project, obviously, and then just carried on on my own. And I think there was one, um, there was one time when he said to you, "I want you to go, uh, to take on this particular piece of work," and you were initially reluctant until he told you what it was. What well, Westminster Abbey? <laughs> yes. Well, he just had come to a meeting, and I just thought we had had so many meetings, and I hadn't had a chance to do anything else at all. And then he said, "Well, it is Westminster Abbey." So, right, and we did it. Tell me about that commission, about that work. Well, it's quite daunting to be asked to add anything into Westminster Abbey because it's already so decorative. But they do have to, if they have glass doors, which they have like a glass porch inside the west door to the Abbey, um, it has to have decoration on the glass as a manifestation to stop people walking into it. And when we first went there to have a look, on the first door that you come to, it had a cross made of sellotape. And I thought, hmm, I think we can do better than that. But it's, it's very historical, it's got heraldry and it's got quotations, which is David's um, forte, really. But in the two centre doors, I, had, I drew angels holding shields, these heraldic shields, which he worked out. And the two angels are mine, the first angels I did in any church. They're kind of not very big panels, they're bolted onto the glass doors which are enormous and the bolts are covered with a beautiful little Tudor rose made of bronze, or I think it's bronze, and they keep being stolen. People take them, because <laughs> they're, a, they're a cover for the screw, they just put these little things on the top and people take them away. Hmm. So I don't know if they're glued on now. good years working with David. Very good. Yes, we had a lot of fun. He was, um, he was a good chap to work with. <laughs> we had, oh, I should say it really, we did a, a war memorial together for a church up in Lincolnshire. And there was a sort of airfield and there was clouds and there were various things. And there was a circle in the design with the names of this particular man who had been killed. And we'd done it all. And then David said, oh, there's a mistake. He said, I've got the dates wrong. The thing was finished. And so I, I was talking to the people at the glassworks, and they said, oh, don't worry, we can sort that out. And they cut a circle of glass out of very thin glass. And then with a, some kind of resin glue, they stuck it over the circle that was drawn. And that makes the sandblasting go clear. So you couldn't see it. And so we redid this little circle. David got it wrong again. <laughs> and I thought, well, we can't go on sticking circles on the top. 
stuff. And then he did just say, well, only God is perfect. And, it, and I don't think anybody's even noticed. Painting is, is a big part of your art, your life. And some of that work, some of that painting is made in a, in a very beautiful part of France in Languedoc in a, a small village of Arboras there. Tell me about that place, how you came to be there and how you work there. Well, how I came to be there stems back to working with Bill in Scotland and he was looking for somewhere to live in France and in 1961 he bought the chateau in Arbras. And so from then on, each summer I would go down there and look after his five sons um, each summer. And we kept on doing that and then I got married and then I had a son and we were still doing that. And Tony said, I think we need to get our own place. We can't stay with Uncle Bill forever. Probably could have done, but... And so Bill said, I'll find you a place. And he did. Um, and he rang and said he had found a house with a roof. There were lots of ruins in Arboros, but this one had a roof. So it was, and it's absolutely, we bought it in 1967. And um, it did take us about 10 years of doing it up when we were on holiday before it was livable in, because it was really, was a ruin. Um, but from then onwards, We've, we've had it and I go down as much time as I can really. And there's a very particular light there. Yes, the um, light is fantastic. It's all about light and colour. Um, and I love that landscape and you know, I just walk in it every day. And then I paint it when I'm there, but I also paint it out of my head when I'm here. <laughs> and do you, do you find that you, you paint differently at all when you're there? Or is it the same? Is it is it the same in a way? The same process. I suppose more that I'm what I'm getting at is the idea of again how place, landscape, light might influence the actual painting. Well, I think the light certainly does, because um, there are also places in England that I paint. I like going to Dungeness, and I think it's the light again, the light from the sea. Mm -hmm. um, and I really saw it when I went to St Ives too. I can see why there were painters down there, but that's too far to get to normally. Um, no, the Fran I've done a lot of paintings of that part of France, and now they are sort of simplifying, and just it's still the essence and the light of the place that really interests me. And I started off, I mean, I studied painting. I never studied glass. I taught myself glass when, when I kind of had to. Um, but I stopped painting. When my husband died, I, I stopped painting because I had to earn some money. And so I started to work really hard on the glass and I worked for television companies doing stuff for plays and things. Um, all sorts of jobs, I just always said yes. <laughs> and I didn't really pick up painting again for quite a long time. And there was a period around 2000 when there was a a whole spate of millennium windows. David and I did so many windows over that time and I got quite exhausted with it because it is demanding in lots of ways. And I thought I would like to slow down on the glass and give painting the same sort of attention that I'd given to the glass and see if I could, because the painting's all right, but it wasn't where it ought to be. I think one, um, one artist who has been an inspiration from quite early on is is William Blake, um, and as we in this looking at some of of your work, your the windows, the church work, the angels, and that that movement within the work. He's this is a sense of of the Blakean, very much so in terms of glass, but not in terms of painting. I think my I must be like two people because the glass uses one side of my brain. And I like it very much because it, I'm usually given the subject or I have to work out a subject, and it takes you down avenues that I wouldn't normally go down. There's nothing to do with what I paint. And when I paint, it is a completely separate thing. But the love of colour, you feel a bit starved of it if you're doing endless glass because it just isn't there. It's an interesting idea, the two almost two conjoined and separate things. Well, it's how it feels. Yeah. You worked in, in the church in which Blake was married? Uh, yes, St Mary's in Battersea. 
and it's also called the Turner Church because he used to paint. In fact, I sat in his chair and looked down the river and that was the view that he'd painted. Would Turner have been an influence at all? Yes, yes, I think so, yes. Turner or possibly more Constable, the free side of Constable, his big sketches and things are wonderful. Um, you don't see them very often. Did you see some of those paintings when you were little? Gainsborough, Constable? I did actually, come to think of it, because my, I lived with my grandmother all through the war because I was evacuated, but I was only a baby then. But even afterwards, we used to go and stay with her. And all the way up the stairs, she had reproductions of paintings. And we had nicknames for them all, which were not very, <laughs> very <laughs> correct. But there were certainly, there were Gainsboroughs and Constables, paintings of that period. I, I actually feel more of a rapport with painters that were a bit later than that. Mm. Sort of Monet and um, Matisse. Mm. And the English painter Ivan Hitchens means I like very much. Is there in some way, you know, looking at your work, especially the glass work, there's, there which expresses something transcendent, a sense of something spiritual. I wonder, is there for you in making the work a sense of an expression of, of the spiritual? Yes. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it, but um, when you were talking about the drawings being calm or still, that's that's the feeling, um, and it is kind of it's a sp it is a spiritual thing, but it's it's not really a religious thing. But you you know when you've got it, yeah. you can feel it. Um, Does it ever feel like it has almost come from? beyond you or come through oh, I, you? Drawing often does feel like that, actually. Um, I remember when I was studying drawing a lot, and I also went to some meditation classes, and I said I thought I knew what it was like through drawing, and they said, oh, no, no, you've got to stare at a candle. And I thought, no, you don't. <laughs> if you really get to a point where your hand, something is coming from your brain through your arm and out of the end of your hand, and it is drawing, and if you, if you start pushing it and making it do something, that's something that if you can let it flow, it's surprising what, what comes out. Would you, would you ever envisage taking on a, a, another glass commission? I mean, it's, 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 um, no, we talked about the, 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 the challenge of it, yeah, it's such a, it is such a part of you, but are you happier now to well, paint? I th um, it's a good question because I have actually just been offered one. <laughs> I did one last year and I sort of thought probably the last one. They were very big panels, like four metres high, single figures. Um, and it was all right. But this one, I don't know yet whether I'm going to take it or not because there's part of me that sees it as a challenge and an honour to be asked, actually. It's, a, it's quite a grand place where it would be. Um, and the designer part of me can see how it could happen. But it isn't actually my sort of subject. It's just that I know I could make it work. But I'd also need to know that all the facilities and the technician are still available that I've always used, because I've used the same technician in the glassworks for 20 years and he's near to retirement. Now, if he retires, then I think I've retired too. So I'm, I'm not sure about this one. I'm not committed yet. And if, if somewhere like St. Paul's Well, if St. Paul's you. came along, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the one I was waiting for, but yeah. it, hasn't, it hasn't happened. It's never too late. Do you paint every day? Pretty much. Mm, pretty much. Unless I'm working on a glass thing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, not absolutely, mm -hmm. rigorously every day, but most of the time. And I imagine if you're not painting, you're thinking about it. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
and looking. Or gardening. I do that too. I mean, that's what's so good here, is that if you get stuck on a painting or you're just tired, you can go outside and fiddle about in the garden. It's, it's an interesting garden because it's not very big, but it's all on different levels. So you can do some interesting plantings and things, which I like. Gardening's important for you, isn't it? Mm. Just, yeah, growing. Growing things, growing things, yes. <laughs> yeah, growing light, it feels like you're growing light, doesn't it? You're growing colour. Colour, yes, yes. Great. Sally, thank you so much. Thanks, Vincent. <laughs>